My name is Tim Sutinen from privacyproshop.com. This week I came across two of the best reasons why you should switch to Graphene OS or other degoogled operating systems like Lineage OS or Calyx OS right now if you're not already using them. First was a story from Mexico where Samsung, Motorola and other phone manufacturers have been remotely disabling phones that customers purchased from China or other sources that were not purchased through the official import channels. The second story was from justthenews.com that mentioned that numerous congressional staffers of both parties were spied upon by the U.S. Department of Justice in 2017 as a part of a leak investigation. Now, six years later, Google, Apple, and other big tech firms have finally notified those staffers that their records were obtained by a grand jury subpoena from big tech companies. Both of these situations could have been avoided either fully, as in the Mexican case, or in part, as in the US case, by using a de-googled phone. The Mexican case is an attack on your property rights and your privacy, while the US case is an attack on your privacy. This video is brought to you by privacyproshop.com, where you can find nemomail.me, the anonymous email service over the onion-routed LokiNet. Because Nemo Mail uses LokiNet, your real IP address is never revealed to anyone. Pay anonymously with most cryptocurrencies. We also accept credit cards. When your emails must stay anonymous, choose Nemo Mail. The Mexican cell phone blocking case. The official Mexican importers of Samsung, Motorola, and others must have been losing substantial business to Chinese sellers of Samsung and Motorola phones and decided to punish the poor people for buying cheaper phones. Starting this fall, foreign origin Samsung and Motorola phones activated in Mexico were disabled from being able to make phone calls, access apps, or even files in some cases. It's pretty appalling if you think about it. Samsung, Motorola, and others are trying to force customers into buying the more expensive Mexico-specific phones by denying the customers the right to use their own property. The customers didn't buy stolen phones or do anything illegal. They simply wanted to save money. As a part of this promotion by force, Motorola is now offering a 30% discount on phones bought from the official store if your phone was blocked. Talk about humiliating your customers. Wow. Lois Rossman reported on his YouTube channel that Samsung went as far as to completely block access to the phone, including any user data. I'll include a link to his video in the description. Check it out for a thorough explanation of what happened. So how would a privacy operating system like Graphene OS have helped in this situation? A degoggled phone would have completely prevented this from happening, as the manufacturer would have no access to the phone. Manufacturer needs access to the phone via some remote access software, which they have planted in the phone that has direct access to the hardware. Without that level of access, the best the manufacturer could have hoped for is to have requested the telephone company to block the phone based on its IMEI number from making calls on the network. Depending on the leverage the phone manufacturer has with the phone company, they may or may not have succeeded. This Mexican example shows that using stock operating system that comes with your phone is outright hazardous for your phone and your data. The manufacturer of the phone can install anything they want in it to spy on you or to outright disable the phone if you don't do what they want you to do. If you think that Samsung, Motorola or other companies wouldn't do anything like this again or that they would do something like this only in Mexico, think again. As the sales of smartphones have been slowing down, many companies are likely to try to strong arm their customers elsewhere in the world too. That same software that allowed the phone manufacturer to disable the phone can be used to spy on the user of the phone and there is high commercial value in being able to target ads based on what the user does, where they go and what their daily patterns of life are. You don't want the manufacturer of the phone to know everything about you. The only way to prevent this from happening to you is to have a phone that has a privacy operating system installed. Then onto the US government spying. What did the Department of Justice find out about the congressional staffers from big business? 
pretty much anything that's in the cloud services that phone uses, be it iCloud, Google Cloud, Samsung Cloud, or a combination of them. That means call logs, contacts, calendars, files, emails, photos, videos, notes, text messages, location history, and more. If they use social media, the DOJ has all of their Facebook posts, private messages from Facebook Messenger, Instagram posts, Twitter posts and messages, Snapchats, and probably a whole bunch more. Anything that the congressional staffers didn't end-to-end encrypt was most likely searched and read by the Department of Justice. The DOJ also got information from the phone companies of these staffers. Call logs, text message logs, and other metadata, possibly even wiretaps into their phone calls and text messages and the approximate locations of their phones. However, the accuracy of the location information from phone companies is typically much less than what Google, Apple, or Samsung can provide the Department of Justice as they have access to the GPS location of the phone. If you have a de-Googled privacy phone, the information what the authorities can collect is much less. There's no Google, Apple, or Samsung accounts to log into. If you don't use Facebook or other social media, they can't get anything from there. If you keep your emails at an encrypted provider or a server in a country that doesn't respond to U.S. search warrants, or you download all of your emails using POP3 to your own computer, they can't easily read your emails. If you use offline maps and are not connected to the telephone network while driving, they can't track your location. If you make your voice and video calls and send text messages using encrypted apps like Session Private Messenger, the authorities can't track those either. In other words, you can improve your privacy dramatically without going back to the Stone Ages. So, what can the government get when you are using a privacy phone? They will still be able to get information from the phone company, wiretap your phone line, read your normal unencrypted text messages, and get your approximate location. However, that is minimal compared to what they have from Google, Apple, Samsung, or other big tech. Phone company data can be minimized by the use of encrypted communications, offline maps, Wi-Fi only communications when possible, as well as using a phone that's IMEI number and SIM card isn't tied to your identity. I have made several videos that help with privacy, such as how to get a Visa card that isn't tied to you, how to purchase a phone for Graphene OS, how to install Graphene OS, comparisons of session and signal messengers, and many, many more. If that kind of stuff is of interest to you, please view some of the other videos on this channel. That's all she wrote. And as always, have a happy day.